Coach, you want to start us with an opening statement? Well, I'll, I'll just say by, um, you know, the season hasn't gone how I've personally wanted it to go. Uh, but the season's not over. Um, it's a new season. Everybody in the country uh, is in tournament form. Uh, the Georgia team that we faced at the beginning of the year, um, you know, everybody grows, develops, and they're better than what their record is. They're better than what their record shows. Um, and again, it's going to be a tough matchup for us. But we're going to go out there and give our very best, do the things that we can continue to do well. But we got to make sure we do it without making the mistakes that takes place in a game over the course of the game. Uh, Assisted turnover ratio is one of them. We got to do a better job at that. Um, the other thing that brings this about is postseason honors. Congratulations to all those recipients who are going to get voted accolades, and they all deserve it. There's going to be some that may not get voted anything. Who knows? I have no clue. Uh, but I do know one thing. Postseason's here. Uh, Nashville. And our conference has four teams that can be in the Final Four. Four teams that can, like I can say, can make it. I will be shocked if we don't have two. I will be very shocked. Um, and I just hope this tournament doesn't beat up uh, those teams from achieving uh, what I think that their season uh, and their future is, because it's going to be a tough, tough road uh, for us to make it. We got to win five games. We got to win five games. and in less than many days, right? Um, and there's going to be teams that fight and claw uh, and try to go to the very end. Uh, and we're just going to do that exact same thing and just try to give our very best. Great questions. Dennis, what's been your message to the team of kind of closing that book on the regular season and kind of getting that clean slate going into the postseason? Or is that kind of something you've done with the Yeah, the message has always been consistent at the very beginning of each summer when we get a got group of guys, we talk about uh, non-conference, we talk about conference, we talk about um, conference tournament, and we talk about postseason play with uh, NCAA tournament. Uh, that's what we talk about. So those four things and four areas in your season that you got to kind of uh, highlight, circle, uh, and this is still, no matter what the season has um, you know, unfolded, this is still an opportunity for us to try our very best to achieve a goal that we set out. What do you feel like from last time you played Georgia? What do you feel like you learned from that game and hope to build on there? Well, I think we got done a better job getting to the free throw line. That was a game where we shot seven free throws to their 20-something, and they had 16 of them in the second half. Uh, we went into halftime sort of tied um, in that area. We just wasn't able to get there and I think we're doing a better job at that I think uh, learning how to draw fouls and uh, I think you got to blame uh, the head coach for his rant and challenging of his team during that phase after one game right um, then you look at um, I would say taking care of the ball I thought uh, they made some timely jump shots some timely threes uh, they were able to get into the lane a little bit uh, with their inside play, uh, their big fella did a good job of um, getting second chance rebounds and different things like that. So it's been it's been that part where I see um, their team strengths, but also I saw uh, different things in our uh, growth this season that that can allow us to sort of solve those issues that took place in that first game. You talk about everyone kind of growing. Uh, what In what ways have you seen Georgia grow since that game y'all played against them? Well, you have no choice but to grow in this conference, going uh, and playing the teams that uh, you play. I think Georgia has dealt with some injuries as well, and that's kind of gotten them off of their um, path. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But they have a balanced team. They have a good team, good rotation. Um, and I think they're better than their record uh, would indicate. Dennis, you mentioned Saturday evening that you were going to look at 
the season stat sheet, you know, look at maybe some lineup adjustments. Yep. What 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 has that process told you and how might that influence Wednesday? Well, I'll read some off to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, assist to turnover ratio in conference, we're at a negative. We had 198 assists to 208 turnovers, and you got to look at the deviation of it. It should be a lot greater on the positive side, whereas you you want more like 300 plus or close to 300 assists to 100 or you know 150 turnover. You want a two to one ratio. And we don't have that, so that's one of them that uh, we have to address, we have to fix. Uh, the other thing is when you look at our rebounding average, right, uh, you have a by-committee approach. When we out-rebound teams, uh, we're able to give ourselves opportunity. We're able to get out on a break and get easier baskets because they're not navigating with steals or blocks that leads into that. Uh, you look at uh, our shooting percentage from Noah Carter. It was great to see him make some shots yesterday or the other day, day before yesterday. Uh, but also you look at Nick Honor, you look at Tamar Bates and Sean East, their in-conference three-point field goal percentage isn't like their full season. So we got to find a way to make sure those guys are able to get some easier baskets um, along the way. Um, Shot blocking, you know, we got to use our athleticism without fouling and keeping teams off that free throw line. And that's where teams have been able to really punish us. Um, our opponents have shot 490 free throws. We've shot only 360 and or or yeah, 360. And that's in conference. That is a upside down number. And we got to do a better job at it. If Wednesday's a new season. This yeah, is a, this new is a, season. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> this, that makes this a really short preseason. Um, how do you how do you get to some of those issues in, in the time span that you have available? I think it, when you look around the country, right, uh, you look at every every conference, and their postseason tournaments have started. They're not the same teams either. It brings about a. Uh, difference with players. It brings about a difference with refereeing. I think refs have a opportunity to go to the Final Four as well. They don't want to miss calls and they're graded on it. So you're going to see a different focus in every facet of the game from everyone. The people that's at the scores table won't make mistakes or different things. And if they do, great. They'll fix it. But I think our players and the game is inside of the lines, right? Ex excluding referees, players are making plays. Players are making plays. Outside of their normal averages and that desperation can allow certain things in a short time to take place and fix itself and solve itself. You have a body of work, but now, you know, in this situation, whoever loses this next game is done. Uh, and that's how the approach is. Do you envision making rotation changes or modifications this week? We'll see. We'll see. What's the process behind doing that or not doing that? I think the flow of the game a little bit. Um, you know, I think the opportunity of certain lineups, uh, you know, we got to see who's available. I go into every game trying to figure out who's available on our team to play. And I know you guys are looking at what is Jason going to release, release now. <laughs> like, let's follow Jason on Twitter. Let's see what, what's being released, who's playing. You guys know the exact same time. If there is somebody unavailable, what time that will be, right, announced and where to find it. I don't know until that time sometimes. And I, I, our doctors do a great job. I will never question our trainer, our doctors. I will never put guys in vulnerable situations who aren't available and ready, especially without talking to their parents. We don't, we don't know sometimes who's available. So that's gonna be a big part of it to try to figure out who's actually available. That's gonna be very important. And that's how I've gone into a lot of our games. And it's disrupted our organic growth, the ability to get better, a team, getting better over a course or a period of time. Uh, what I'm 
you know, excited. And last game, I was excited to see. I think Trent Pierce played, what, 17, 18 minutes or something? Um, it was good to see him out there. Him going through what he's gone through this season, it, you know, his, his oxygen level wasn't there. But I, I still have to see how his body responds. He may play three minutes because of recommendation from doctor and then also how he may be feeling, right? Connor Vanover played Florida game, had a pretty good game. We hadn't seen him since, you know, just because of doctor's rec recommendation. So we just got to get healthy, man, and, and try our very best with who we have. There's still a game to be played. Nobody's going to have pity or empathy for us. Um, it's just great to see certain guys step up to the plate opportunity. And uh, that's what I want to continue to see. To that end, Caleb Grill, was that a situation where the wrist just hasn't come back? Or was there a decision to you know, have him sit out and have a chance at going for a waiver for another year? Yeah, so it, it, he did not have a easy healing process. And if he did, he would have came back to play. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, when you have surgery, you have foreign object put in your body, it reacts a different way to everybody. And when it's a wrist, you have to understand mobility. But also, if he fell on that wrist and tried to compensate, what other bones will take the brunt of that force if his mobility isn't correctly done? This is a physical sport, a physical conference. If it swells up, it's telling us something. So I have to continue to protect these guys the best we can, and our doctors and our, and our trainer has done so uh, as well. So I, I have to take those in, into consideration. Are there, are there any lessons learned from last year's SEC tournament or your time in the Horizon League going into a conference tournament? Because it's so much different than the regular season. You can be playing four or five straight days. So yeah. what's your message to your team? And then what's different as an approach as a head coach? I think the message is one game at a time and make sure that you give your very best every single possession, no different than we have been playing. What we've been showing is the ability to go out there and compete, right? We're not questioning our level of competition or if we're competing. We're competing. Now we have to make the shots. Now we have to create more free throw opportunities. Now we have to take care of the basketball at even a greater margin. And I think our guys, when we look across country at different games, men's and women, it is a heightened level of intensity. Just think about South Carolina uh, LSU women's game yesterday. Unbelievable basketball game, unbelievable emotions. We don't need those things happen. And, and every one of those young ladies wish that it didn't get to that point. But that's what competition breeds. If your team is practicing as hard as they can, Teammates are supposed to fight because the level of intensity is that is that you know that far uh, above everything else. So we have to go out and compete, give our very best, keep our composure, and make sure that we're ready to adjust to whatever the game is throwing our way. As a head coach, I'm including myself in that. I'm not, I never put everything on my players. I've grown this year. I, I continue to get better. And therefore, my staff does the same thing and our players do the same thing. I put full responsibility on myself. I don't blame one player for where we are at all, nor a search situation or circumstance. Dennis Gates is responsible for this season. Time for one last question. We talked a lot about maybe some of the statistical sides and what you can do on that front, but. When you're in a run like this, heading into the tournament, how do you maybe overcome some of the mental fatigue that comes with, with a long losing streak? That does not, mental fatigue doesn't exist in my world. That's why you see our players playing how they play. Um, it's process driven, not results driven. And when you are committed to a process, your practices are consistent, your effort is consistent, your controllables are very consistent. So when your controllables become inconsistent, that's when the mental fatigue is able to show itself. That's what it's able to do. The season is long and difficult and hard. We're in the winter months. The kids never go home for Christmas break, Thanksgiving break, 
and spring break, right? It's a long season. They've been playing basketball for a long time and they know. So we have to create an environment that doesn't allow guys to tap out and give in to fatigue emotionally, mentally, right, um, physically. The one thing I would say, obstacle shows itself. It's great to see Ant Robinson get through the emotional trauma of losing someone that raised him, right? You have those things that happen in a season. It's great to see guys get, get, get through sprained ankles, get through in Trent Pierce situation, a surgery. Um, Sean East has played the best basketball this season after his knee injury, after he was out for two games. He couldn't play, couldn't practice. And to see these guys get through that fatigue and not give in, it's just a sign of your character, sign of your team, sign of your environment, and it's all hands on deck. It goes with the trainers, the, the strength coach, the staff to keep guys' spirits high, and our guys are doing that. Right, Drew, you got a question? Uh, I don't know if anybody asked about Georgia already, but just your thoughts on this upcoming matchup. You know I can't. You know I can't ask Drew if he ain't if he doesn't have a question. <laughs> it concerns me if Drew doesn't have a question now. So with Georgia, um, you know it's going to be a tough game, right? They're not the same team. We're not the same team. We've played each other once, and it was at the very beginning of the season. So. Both teams aren't who their records say they are. Uh, they're well coached. They have different positions. They got great players. They have gone through some injuries that's disrupted their season and availability. Uh, from a statistical standpoint, you know, they're a very streaky three point shooting team, but they can get into that lane. They can draw fouls. They're physical at the guards, guard level, they're physical inside. Um, it's just a different approach to postseason play where no matter what their stats are, um, they're going to try to be winning, winning. They're going to try their best to win a ball game and they're going to try their best to execute a game plan and they're going to try their best to make plays and really do what young people do in March. And you'll see players rise to the occasion like we have over, if you watch ESPN in different conferences, and conference tournaments, but you'll see teams uh, and players be able to do the necessary things they need to do to allow their teams to win. Uh, they're getting to the free throw line more than their opponents. They're turning the ball over a little bit less, if not in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, level. Um, they are assisting the ball. They have a one-on-one -on -one assist to turnover ratio. Uh, so it's almost like who will they be when you play them? I know Mike White will have his team prepared, and I know I'll have my team prepared. And the best part about the SEC tournament is that, um, you know, you can play well in advance, but one possession can turn it, and you can you can you cannot have that performance go your way, even if you've played well. Um, I just think the atmosphere will be great on a neutral site. Our conference do a great job. Uh, in that environment, our fans in that footprint come out and support. You'll see every single basketball fan from every sport in those seats, even in these first two games, um, you know, on Wednesday. Regardless of who's playing, it's going to be a basketball environment. And I'm excited for our kids to see it, our young kids to see it. And they're, they're, they're excited to play in it. If I quickly may, how's Coach not doing? Thanks for asking that, man. Um, Coach Nutt has received and his second uh, chemo treatment. This was probably his toughest uh, response to it. Um, you know, physically, you know, it's been aware on his body. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if this one is the one that takes away his hair. Um, you know, I wouldn't be shocked at that, but he's in the recuperating phase of it uh, and his brother uh, Houston uh, we talk often and he gives me an update uh, his daughter Alexis his sons um, you know they give they give me an update and we're always constantly talking to him and coach Nutt is talking to us he's still on staff he still watch games we want him to stay as involved as possible um, with our team 
and with the game of basketball that he identifies with. Uh, so he can always have something to look forward to every single day. Uh, he's going on walks. His brother, if he has to drag him yeah, and he's <laughs> fatigued, he'll drag him out to make sure that he's, he's putting in the necessary work every day to keep his spirits high. Um, and that's what family does. That's why I was, you know, with him late night after a game or um, making time for him when he's in town or just chilling at the hospital with him, trying to figure out. That's what family does for everybody, for each other. Uh, that's why our players are involved and we'll FaceTime, we'll call him, we'll communicate, and he'll communicate back with us. So he watches the games now. I know one game the nurses had to turn it off because his blood pressure went up. <laughs> oh, gosh. But um, sorry about that, Coach Nutt. But he's, he, he loves it, man. He's a ball coach, man. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Thanks. M-I-Z.